Jordan Roy Byrne from the DailyGold.com is back once again to talk about the recent movements in gold and silver and what we might look for from them short term. This and more on this week's episode of Metal Money. I'm your host, Patrick Vieira. Jordan Byrne, welcome back to Metal Money. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. Thanks so much for having me, Patrick. Uh, Jordan, we're happy to have you back, and we thank you again for giving us your time. You know, in a recent article, gold stocks very oversold but need macro catalyst. You commented that if the Fed does not hike rates for another 12 to 18 months, then gold and gold stocks cannot resume a gold bull market without a stock market correction. Now, recently we saw terrible jobs numbers where one may assume there might not be a taper anytime soon and therefore there may not be rate hikes anytime soon. If so, what type of stock correction or macro catalyst would we need to see for the gold bull run to continue? Well, we would need to see a correction on the order of probably 15% to 20% because we would need enough capital to really flow out of conventional, you know, conventional investments like stocks and bonds, uh, but stocks specifically because the stock market, it continues to trend higher. And if you just study the history of gold in the stock market. Gold has never, or well, I'll put it this way. If you want a real bull market in gold where it's gonna be sustained for several years and it's ripping higher, um, that always happens when gold is strongly outperforming the stock market. The only, I mean, we did have 1985 to 87 was a period when uh, you did kind of have a cyclical bull and precious metals, but the stock market went up at the same time. And then you can also say, you know, maybe 2018 to 2020 or 2016 to 2020, but it wasn't really, I mean, it wasn't really a smooth bull market because over those periods, um, especially, you know, the last five years, yes, yes, gold has gone up, but the stock market has outperformed, which, I mean, I'm surprised gold has even gone up nominally in that environment. So to circle back to what I was saying, if we're going to see a real bull market in gold, in other words, if we're going to see gold break above 1900 and break to a new all-time high, uh, you're going to need to see one of two things. Either inflation accelerates and, you know, the Fed hiking rates is a signal that inflation is accelerating. Uh, Or you need to see uh, a stock market correction, a real stock market correction, uh, because that would get people panicked. That would, uh, capital would start flowing out of stocks and the areas that have been performing very well over the last 12 months, and it would flow into things like precious metals. Last time we spoke on July 7, gold was roughly at about $1,800 per ounce, and today we're still in that roughly that same area. Two full months have gone by, and we still do see a consolidation period for gold. Jordan, is this what you meant when you talked about needing a macro catalyst to push gold upwards out of this consolidation period or risk seeing the gold bull run end? Well, I mean, technically it is. I, I think um, it could, this move, I mean, it, it surprised me, the rebound. Uh, it has been pretty strong in a short-term sense. So I think there's enough momentum where it can approach 1900 or reach 1900, where you have weekly, monthly, and quarterly resistance at 1900. So that's an extremely important level moving forward. Uh, so I think for gold to surpass 1900, you need to see the things that I was saying before. You need to see uh, the market sense that, you know, inflation is going to accelerate or we're going to, you know, it looks like we're going to have stagflation or there's a real growth problem. Because if the market starts sensing those things, then investors, the big money, they're going to start favoring gold over things like the stock market. I mean, over the last year, obviously, they've been favoring uh, things like the stock market. And the problem is, if you look at the gold to the stock market ratio, it's, I mean, I don't know if it was a month ago or two months ago. I mean, it it made a 15 year low. I mean, that's been the biggest surprise to me over the last 12 months. I'm not surprised we've corrected, uh, but I am surprised that we've dramatically underperformed the stock market. So that's a trend that's still going against gold. And that, that needs to reverse to have a real bull market in gold. You're not going to see a real bull market, you know, which means gold really exploding above $2,000 an ounce. You're not going to see that until gold outperforms the stock market. 
So again, you know, that requires stagflation or inflation really accelerating or, you know, major growth concerns. I mean, circling back to the short term, the Fed, you know, not doing the taper yet and possibly they're, you know, not going to hike for a while. That's short term bullish. That's giving us a short term rebound in the sector. And like I said, you could see gold go to 1900. I mean, silver and the gold stocks, they have some more room to rebound. However, I don't think this rebound is, I mean, it's not sustainable unless the economic picture really deteriorates. And then the Fed says, okay, well, we can't hike for like three years now. And you know, then, you know, investors are concerned, the stock market sells off and, you know, then that's your fuel for the move to continue. But on the other hand, if this is just temporary and we rally for a couple months back up to resistance levels, uh, but then the stock market keeps making new highs, it's going higher, then the Fed is going to say, okay, we're going to start tapering, we're going to hike rates after that. And that's going to cause, you know, the next sell-off in precious metals. So it's you, it's just evaluating these short-term and intermediate-term scenarios. Okay, you know, Jordan, a, a question comes to mind as as we're we're talking here. Uh, we're, I'm listening to how they're a, a real gold bull market, a real gold bull market. But let me ask you: Is this a real stock market run? I mean, is what we're seeing in the stock market is is that real as well? I mean, a lot of people do think it's it's Fed induced and it the stock market run may not even be real. Well, I mean it it is Fed induced, but um, I mean uh, to me, I would say it is real because looking at things from a, the st the standpoint of gold, the stock market's really outperformed gold. Interestingly, if you look at the two thousands, you know the two thousand two to two thousand seven bull, you know I would say that was not a real bull market because gold outperformed during that period. So give I mean, I guess, you know, I'm gold centric in my view and analysis, but because the stock market is outperforming gold, that tells me that, you know, it is a real bull market. I mean, of course, the Fed is supporting the market and the stock market just follows corporate profits. We know that corporations have a huge amount of power. Fed policy is greasing the wheels for corporations, so to speak. So uh, you know, eventually we'll get into a period when there's more inflation. Uh, politically, everybody wants to see rising wages. Politically, people are not happy about corporate power. So it takes time for these things to shift. But eventually, uh, these things are going to come to the surface. Uh, they're all part of, you know, the next secular bear market in the stock market, which, by the way, that's going to coincide with the real bull market that I'm talking about in gold. Okay. You know, so Jordan, as we kind of jog along through through time here, what are your current numbers for short term resistance and support levels for gold running up into Q4 and and into 2022? I, I know you mentioned 1900 is a key level. Yes, I mean, and there is some initial resistance, you know, 1830 and gold where we are now, 1850, 1860. There's some initial resistance in there, uh, but the real major resistance is going to be 1900. I do think, you know, if we're able to rally back there, that is a good sign. We will, we will have rallied back to that resistance, not once, but twice after this correction began. So that would be a positive sign if we were to reach 1900. Uh, on the downside, I mean, obviously 1675 is pretty, uh, that's pretty uh, strong support at this point. So what I would look for, if we are able to rally to 1900, we probably get a pullback uh, and then, you know, from there, the issue is uh, you know, when the market pulls back, can it hold above a higher level? Like, I don't have the chart in front of me, but, um, you know, is it the 200 day moving average? I think is, you know, 18, 11, something like that. I don't know where the 400 day is, but assuming gold rallies up to 1900 over the next couple months and then it pulls back, uh, the question is, can it hold above, you know, let's say the 200 day, which is around 1811, 1815. So, I mean, that's just a little, that's a possible scenario over the next, you know, three to five months or so. Uh, I mean, as far as silver, um, silver is really interesting because if you take a bird's eye view, silver made this huge, I mean, a historic move from 11 to $30. And Silver, even though it's it's traded in a range, I think it's held above $22 twice. And so that's a positive. Uh, I like the recent rebound in silver. It held above important support. 
Uh, it also held above the 38% uh, retracement of that move from 11 to 30. So silver is potentially building a very bullish flag pattern. Now, a flag pattern is one of mark. Think of a flagpole. The market makes like a vertical move. And then it digests and consolidates that move, but it it holds the majority of the gains. So silver holding above the thirty eight percent retracement, it's holding the majority of the gain. So even though it it's failed to break thirty like three times, it's still holding above twenty two in the majority of the gain. So silver potentially, um, if it, I mean, it could trade in this range for another six to twelve months, and. You know, I know silver bulls, that's upsetting because they want silver to go to 50 right now and $100 next year. But if silver continues to hold in this range it well into next year, it's going to be setting up to break above $30. And if that happens, the measured upside target from the bull flag is about 48 or 49. So to me, if you tell me, Jordan, I know my crystal ball is telling me that silver is, is it's going to stay between 22 to 30 over the next six to 12 months, then I would feel pretty confident that, you know, over the next, you know, 12 to 24 months, silver is going to, at some point, it's going to break about 30 and trend towards 50. But Jordan, will silver need that same type of stock correction or macro catalyst as gold will in order to start marching upward? I think so. And it's a good question on the macro front, because if, the catalyst for gold is a stock market correction and economic weakness. In that scenario, gold is going to outperform silver. Gold will outperform silver first. So silver will kind of lag in that scenario. However, if it's the other scenario where we see inflation accelerating, you know, and maybe growth picks up a little bit, but there's still, uh, there's still concerns about inflation and inflation fears move up alongside uh, growth expectations moving up that type of environment, silver is going to outperform gold and would break above uh, 30, you know, before gold uh, breaks above 2100, I would say. So it, it, for, it, for silver, it depends on the macro and the kind of which, uh, which side things veer to, you know, over the next six to 12 months. Okay. And so between the, the, the three patterns, buy, sell, hold, where would you be in gold and silver right now? Well, just on the metals, I mean, I, I would say uh, it's a, you're putting me on the spot. I wouldn't say <laughs> sell. So it's it's either, uh, you know, I, I hate to be bullish in any interview, but uh, it's hard to give blanket advice. I mean, if you're for gold and silver, if you're going to be holding for several years, they're definitely a buy right now. If you're looking to do a trade, uh, then I would say you could buy both of them. But, you know, I would potentially take profits at, you know, around 1900 gold. I think for, you know, I'm interested to see where silver can go. I mean, I think the 200 day for silver is I want to say 26 or 27. Uh, so I'm really interested to see if silver can manage to rally back to 28 with this rebound. All right. Jordan Roy Byrne from the dailygold.com. We thank you for your time and we'll see how these numbers start to pan out. Hope we can do this again soon. Thank you, Patrick. That was Jordan Roy Byrne from TheDailyGold.com sharing his views on what gold and silver will need to keep the bull run alive. As always, please leave your thoughts in the comment section below and remember to keep it liquid, keep it real. I'll see you on the next episode of Metal Money.